and we're back. And this time we're going to be tackling these pesky little critters known as shovels. Uh, just a very, very barely uh, veiled shovel comment. Now, these things are, well, quite difficult to deal with if when you first encounter them. But until once you learn how to utilize them, they're actually quite, well, essential. The reason being they're garbage disposal. They dispose of all of that regolith you're going to accumulate. I have accumulated 8,700 tons of regolith. Um, if you want to use, well, space, well, namely solar. If you want to use solar, you're going to need to actually use shovel voles to dispose of the, you know, shovel voles to dispose of all the regolith you're going to accumulate. You don't have a choice. Uh, the first time I got into space, I didn't actually invest in shovel voles early enough, or shovel voles early enough, and I ended up with about 40,000 tons of regolith building up or something, something crazy. I ended up with so much regolith and it slowed my game to a crawl. So the devs invented this as a sort of a waste disposal unit. Now, before I used to use a completely different design for these, but this one after, well, after I've played for a while, I've learned, you know what, let's try something a little different. So I've mocked something up and let's see how this works out. You're going to need to include a robo miner because, well, yeah, these things kind of do spit out uh, this waste product that's going to clog up the ground. So you do need to mine it out. Yeah get rid of all the junk in here and you're going to use metal tiles all the way around i'm using gold because i just have a ridiculous amount of gold right now that's my refined metal looking like yeah way too much gold and and everything in here is going to be made of niobium i could have built this whole setup a long time ago but i wanted to wait until i'd accumulated niobium i've got 20 tons right there uh that's a decent amount of niobium but uh you could have made this out of thermium thermium you could have built well pretty soon into the game and now, where was I supposed to put this? Was this here? Yeah, here. Nope. Made a mistake. I made that one out of gold. It's going to overheat. You see, you need to uh, you need to put atmospheric pressure in here, uh, namely because these you're going to have to cool down the conveyor rails, or not the conveyor rails, the auto sweepers and the conveyor loaders. So one there, one there, I think was what I decided upon. So what we're going to do here is dump our shovels in here we're going to groom them and get them working and then we're going to get them to eat all the regolith we're going to have to harvest the regolith automatically as well there's actually quite a lot of effort into getting these up and running so the devs to pay you for all this effort are going to give you a nice bonus these things drop five times more meat than anything else that makes them super useful now uh, where's going to put this yeah this one here yeah let's put that actually no i'm going to rotate that uh, conveyor loader I'm going to want to get the eggs out of here as soon as possible. And we're also going to put in one for eggshells. We're going to be getting into the... I've been inspired by some of the base videos I've seen to actually dispose of stuff just faster and more efficiently. So I'm going to have the eggshells actually rooted down on a conveyor rail all the way to my uh, grinding up where they can be ground up for later use. Uh, uh, so these here will cover the area and allow me to pick up all the eggs and the eggshells. We're just going to breed these suckers in here but we're also going to need a way in. Now, to keep the shovels in, do not use manual airlocks or mechanized airlocks. These things just do not work. Uh, critters are designed to only really work properly with pneumatic doors. This is this is just the way it is. Uh, I don't believe that's been changed. If it has, let me know. But last I checked, you need to use pneumatic doors no matter what. Uh, why am I making metal tiles out of niobium? Please tell me I'm not. Yeah, I'm making metal tiles out of niobium. That is a huge waste. Uh, let's cancel all those. Yeah, let's cancel those too and deconstruct them. Uh, but the doors I'm going to make out of niobium because they can overheat. So it would be bad if I had them overheating on me. And I'm putting the door up the top. I know that seems very odd, but um, when it comes to these things, they spit up... Uh, piles of regolith. They're going to spit out tile, tiles of regolith, I should say. And if you keep a door on the ground floor, so you had a door right here, sometimes they'll actually vomit that regolith into the doorway, blocking the door. So it's best to have the doors up top so when your dupes come down, the, the regolith can't ever stick inside the door. It'll just fall down here. Uh, yeah, so my, you, you want to make sure... Oh, Oops, one second. Uh, let's get some obsidian in there. Uh, yeah, we'll put that like that. I need to get a way out. That jupe is actually trapped in there right now. Uh, do I have another exit for them? No, I do not. You know what? Someone will sort them out. Probably. Uh, we'll make some priority now. eights here. Give me a couple of eights right there. Now, uh, metal tiles, gold, more gold. 
Okay, so that gives us a sealed box we can actually dump them in. Uh, these will allow us to get it, get the eggshells in. Well, the eggshells and the eggs. Actually, no, I just want the eggs. Okay, I haven't thought this through enough. We just want to get the eggs out of here. And, oh, actually, no, there will be eggshells hatching in here as well. And we're going to need a way to get the meat out. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, I'll figure this out as they go along. I'll play this by ear. Uh, we'll deconstruct these. Now, I'm going to want to put in my grooming stations in the bottom, and I'm also going to want to put in some drop-offs for the regolith. Um, it used to be you had to use feeders to feed them. It was the only way to really get the regolith in properly, unless you wanted to use uh, dropper arms, but that was very inefficient. But now, with the new upgrades, we can actually just stick in a conveyor chute and drop off the regolith. Say, hmm, it doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter what they're made of. We'll put in three this side. I'll find a use for them eventually. Uh, so my dupes can now get in and out, which is good. Oh, yeah. I'm going to need a critter drop off and I'm going to need some grooming stations. We're going to go with two grooming stations. Uh, we're actually going to make those. Do they overheat? I don't think they can overheat, can they? Nope, they don't list an overheat temperature. We'll find out later. Put those in there. Uh, are these made of niobium? Yes. Drills made of niobium. Sweepers made of niobium. Everything else made of niobium except for the tiles on the edge, which are all made of gold. Perfect. Now, I could have made this out of thermium. That actually would have been faster, but uh, you ever played those video games where you're facing a boss and you're still using your weak weaker weapons because you want to save the ammo for later? That's basically what I'm doing here. You you should probably just set this up the moment you get some your hands on thermium because you can usually get about 40 tons of this stuff early on. I just like to conserve stuff. Now, uh, food. We're going to get a critter drop off. Uh, and then we're going to need a kill room for these. I mean, an evolution room. An evolution room. Now... These things are a little bit trickier than other critters. Basically, they're extremely tough. Let's uh, grab them here. Here's a shovel. If you look at this here, their comfortable living... Actually, their livable range is minus 200 degrees Celsius to 500 degrees Celsius. Basically, you could stick them on a grill and they wouldn't even notice they're on the grill. In fact, I'm not even sure how these get turned into barbecue. I can't imagine meat that can withstand 500 degrees Celsius. What would you have to cook it to? just to actually turn it into barbecue i'm not even sure and freezing them yeah good luck getting them down to minus 200 degrees doable just uh, not very convenient now instead what we're going to do is we are going to help them evolve by exposing them to one thing they can't stand they can survive vacuum survive extreme cold extreme heat but they can't survive being submerged in a liquid any liquid now what i'm going to do here i'm going to put uh, an auto sweeper in here then i'm also going to want a ladder down so let's stick in a ladder here. You know what? I'll figure out where, how deep I'm going to make this in a minute. And we'll deconstruct a few of these tiles. We don't need them. There we go. Now, where's my shipping? All right, so auto sweeper will go... Oh, we'll need a doorway as well. Ooh. Actually, cancel you. We're going to need a doorway up there. And my door will make you out of... Actually, it doesn't really matter what you're made out of. We'll make you out of steel. We've got plenty of steel. Uh, I realized I'd made a silly, silly mistake at one point. Well, not so much a mistake as I missed something. I had lime accumulating and my steel manufacturing facility had messed up. As in, the coolant in the pipes had flashed a sour gas because of uh, the problems I'd been having. And I hadn't fixed that. So I'd managed to accumulate five tons of lime. Five tons of the stuff. Uh, that's about 50 tons of steel I could have made out of it, which would have been really useful when I was building those rocket silos. Which reminds me, the rocket silos are pretty much complete. Look at them there, they're, yes, basically very square, like most of my other designs, very, very square. But I've managed to arrange them in order from smallest to tallest. Uh, research ship is just back. And, yeah, I still have to find a way to get rid of those uh, souvenirs they're bringing back from space. I've built some, uh... we'll deal with that later. First, we just want to get this up and running. Uh, for this here, give me shipping. What we're going to do is pipe the eggs from in here and dump them into this room. Uh, I made that of niobium, didn't I? That doesn't need to be niobium. It's not going to be that hot in here. Actually, you know what? I might as well be safe. It is going to be touching the adjacent room, which means it could get up to 300 degrees. Let's, uh, yeah, let's just cover our butts to be safe. Uh, we'll put in a loader there to get rid of all of the meat. And then we'll put in a chute to drop off the actual eggs itself. So basically, this evolution room, its only purpose will be eggs get sent in here. The eggs will drop off here. We'll fill this room with petroleum. 
And then, uh, oh, cool. I made the biggest mistake you can possibly make. Dupes are going to entomb themselves if I'm not careful. When you make these one tile high build orders, a dupe will stand inside it and entomb themselves. It happens an awful, awful, awful lot. Okay, let's get rid of that. Uh, so we'll fill this with petroleum. The actually get rid of that for a moment. We'll fill it with petroleum. We'll have uh, the eggs shipped in there. The eggs will sit here. Then when they hatch, the this will force the voles to evolve. And once they achieve their final form, we'll uh, ship them off to where they need to go. Now, actually, I might want to put in. I'm trying to think of if I should put in one for the eggshells as well. I should probably put in another rail for the eggshells. Actually, you know what? It's big enough already. I'll I'll sort something out as we go. Should I use the B key more? I've been trying to convince myself to do that. Uh, so that's that all up and running. The only thing we need to do now is actually send in some... Hmm. Oh, actually, yeah, that was it. We're going to actually have to pressurize this area just so we can get some heat transfer going on. So I'm going to put down one bottle emptier there and... Ooh, you know what, we're going to need a tile. I'll put a tile right there and put a bottle empty on top of it. I'm going to pressurize quite a large area just because why not? We can do it. And to do this, we're going to use visco gel because visco gel is quite handy, especially if you want to speed up travel times because dupes can basically walk straight through it. I use some visco gel down here. Um, this is my basically my giant collection pit of stuff. And this is the hardest working weight plate in all of dupedom. That is just way too much stuff. I can't actually scroll over that tile. If I scroll over the tile, it causes the game to hang for about five to 10 seconds while it tries to figure out what's on it. So yeah, don't, don't, if you do this, don't look at the tile with your cursor, just leave it there. But uh, yeah, these visco gel little airlocks, very useful. Dupes can walk straight through them, doesn't slow them down, unlike the, uh, the other liquid locks we've been using up to this point. All right. Now, but with these ones, I have to be much, much, much more careful. And by that, I mean, yeah, if I lose track of these, they'll they'll get a bit crazy. 100 kilos of visco gel will form one tile. 200 kilos will cover two tiles. So all we're going to do is put one bottle through these. That's it. Once one bottle has gone through them, one bottle will be 200 kilos of visco gel. We'll just leave it at that. There you go. Uh, let's uh, turn this to a sweep only. Ugh. I'm a Muppet. You know what? Turn that off. Yep. There's no backing plate. Okay. I just wasted 200 kilos of visco gel. It's rather expensive stuff. Right. Backing plate. Backing plate. Actually, let's maybe add a few extra ones just in case. We don't want to lose any of that precious material. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to be filling this whole area with atmosphere. So let's just do that. Yeah, much better. Okay. Now we can actually get some visco gel in there. Well, once the backing plates are complete. Uh, I'm also going to need power, a few other bits and bobs. I'll tell you what, I'll queue this up. The drywall is going to take a while. That's an awful lot of building for them to do. So what I'll do is I'll just queue this all up and then we'll skip forward in time so that you don't have to watch my dupes doing all this uh, manual building. Let's just make sure I nail every single tile. Nothing worse than actually getting these up and running and then realizing all your atmosphere is escaping. But I am not going to pressurize this until I am 100% fully certain that it is good to go. Uh, the reason being, once you have backing plates in, if you remove them to put in a tile, you can't put a tile on top of them. It's really frustrating. So if you decide you need a tile somewhere after, after a while, it just, no, doesn't work. Oh, actually, let me check something room. Yes, that is a stable room size 70 tiles. Perfect. First, let's actually get in some visco gel. Yep. And let's make that regular. Oh, and we'll put in there's mafic rock. I have a tendency to use an awful lot of mafic rock up in space. Yeah, there we go. Ooh. I just realized something. Yeah, I never bothered insulating this box, but that's going to be touching the bottom atmosphere. I should probably actually do something about that. Hmm. You know what? We'll go simple. Uh, I'll deconstruct you. And let's just stick in some insulated mafic rock tiles right here. Yeah, that'll do. 
Okay, that should insulate. This is going to get very hot in here. We're going to be dumping regolith, so 250, 300 degree regolith will be coming in here. This whole area is going to heat up to 200 and 250 to 300 degrees. Uh, okay, that's dropped off that. Uh, put that to sweep only. Oh, okay, that was silly of me. Yeah, let's hope they put that back. I don't want them grabbing another bottle of this stuff. All right, that's that all done. Uh, next up. Oh, yeah, I need to actually fill this with petroleum. Hmm. Plumbing. And uh, liquid vent, we'll just dump it right here in here. All we want to do is make sure all nine tiles of this are full with liquid. That way there's that way it forces the the voles inside it. There's no choice. Uh, where hmm, how am I gonna hook this sucker up? You know what? Put you there. Let's make sure I haven't dropped off any more visco gel. No, I have not. Uh, so that will go there. We'll dump you out like this. There, perfect. Yeah, that should work. Ah, oh, crud. I have no way of actually accessing those tiles to build them. Ladder scaffolds. Always the best. Uh, yeah, that should work. One there, one there. They may not be able to get all of it. I'll probably have to demolish one of these grooming stations. Okay, I'll just cut forward a bit from here so that you can... Well, you're not wasting your time watching this all going on. I'll, uh, I'll cut back in when we're ready to load up this second bottle emptier. Okay, a quick note on the science, actually. We're pretty close to finished. Uh, this rocket has currently completed this asteroid, or uh, this body, this body, and we're going to do this one now. That will clear everything in the 50k range. I actually did everything from 70k out. Um, the reason being I started with 70k is it takes two fuel modules, or yeah, it's two fuel tanks to get from here out to the, all the way to the end. So I just did all of these first, then I was able to shrink the rocket down so I could hit uh, these locations. So all I got left to do was these three and these three, and at this point it's actually small enough that it fits in with all the rest of the rockets. So as you'll notice there, the silos are all in line. So once this is finished with all its science, I can just simply, uh, well, rip out the science modules and turn it into a proper rocket. Well, a cargo hauler. It'll become similar to these ones. In fact, this one is the one I'm going to do, um, allow the dupe in and out. I know trapping the dupes in there seems sort of cruel, but it just, it's so much faster, more efficient, and well, it, it reduces risk for everyone involved. Your dupes don't have to get in and out. Things are much, much less likely to get clogged. Now, um, okay, this is all, yeah, that was amazingly done amazingly quickly. We'll deconstruct you and you and you. Wait, did I deconstruct that? No, I did not. Hey. Okay. Let's get some visco gel in here. Now, if you'll notice, the one on the left-hand side over here looks a little bit janky. Yeah, that's because it got more than 200 kilos. But hopefully this should work out a lot better. Uh, yeah, the reason was I put a blob there and then they brought along a fresh 200 kilo bottle. Oops. Yeah, uh, now, clear out the debris. Get rid of all of that junk. Uh, we're also going to want to put in a station. Where are we? Grooming station. Yeah, just make it out of iron ore. We don't care. Is that 200 kilos? Yes, thank you very much. Now, I'm just going to make that sweep only so they won't bring any fresh stuff. That would be preferred. Uh, three, get rid of the gold. Okay, now hopefully that won't get too weird. Okay, it got a little weird. You know what? Don't care. Uh, we will deconstruct that. And we'll also deconstruct this one. And then we will mop up these liquids. Yeah, I'm going to have to make maybe a pit to drop off some of the, uh, the gunk. Uh, that visco gel is just an annoyance, and we'd have to find some way to get rid of it. Oh yeah, but that gives us a fully pressurized room. We can now dump atmosphere in here, and there's nowhere for it to escape. Now, oh, next up. Oh, power. Yes, let's check and see how our power brick here is doing. Um, oh wait, yeah, I got like a power brick right here. Yeah, this would make things very simple. All right. Power should be fairly straightforward. Actually, I have... 10 times more gold than I have iron. You know, I'm just going to use gold for these ones. Uh, you know what? We'll use this one. Yeah, this should be fine. And we'll go up three tiles. Actually, no, we'll go four. Yeah, that last base I reviewed that had that super neat power grid, it just makes me feel bad about how messy mine is. Like, uh, if I zoom out here... Actually, one second. Let's just zoom out and have a look. Yeah, my power grid sort of goes all over the shop. Oof. Okay, that's about the neatest looking one over there. And look at that spaghetti junction. <laughs> ah, it works, it works, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Eh. 
and zoom right back in. Okay, right, so that gives us power. Now, what we do need though is volts. Well, volts would be handy. Uh, where are we? Uh, volts, 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 shovels. We want shovels and volt pups. Okay, we'll make you priority eight for the time being. We want to make you very high priority. We're just going to dump in a few voles to start, and those voles will provide us with our seed population. I'm not going to actually transfer all of them. Now, uh, the sneaky bit. We're going to put in a little bit of automation here to control things. What I want to do is have an enormous, enormous, enormous amount of voles. I mean, just ridiculous. Uh, do these things overheat? Hmm. It has an overheat temperature buff. You know what? Just in case they overheat, let's do it that way. Now, automation wire. Uh, we'll put you into, say, this one? Yeah. We're going to have this... Um, the automation wire, the conveyor loader, we're going to have this one picking up the eggs. So where have we got eggs? Critter eggs. You know what? We'll make it all eggs. We don't really care. Actually, you know what? No. No. We're going to be careful about this. Uh, shovel egg. There we go. All right, so only shovel eggs will get put in there. But I'm going to hook this up so that it only turns on when we're, we hit a certain amount of uh, critters in the room. Basically, I'm going to max it out. I'm going to set this to 64 critters. And until there's that combination of eggs and voles in the room, this will not turn on, this uh, conveyor loader. Well, that's the theory. So what should happen is we should build up to a nice high population of voles, and once it starts getting too big, we'll start taking the eggs out of the room. This way the eggs will actually stay in the room and hatch, but once they get to it, once there's too many eggs in here, they'll get dumped in here, and we'll have them sent across to the evolution chamber. Well, that's the theory. Now, the one thing I also did was I put the closest edge of these to the edge of the wall, uh, there's a reason for this. Uh, where is it? Shipping. So when the eggs are put in here, the moment they get into this tile, they are no longer counted as being in the room. Just to... It, it cuts down on the amount of time before the sensor upgrades, updates, and stops sending out more eggs. Uh, it's actually... You know what? I'm going to run you through the walls. It looks cleaner. There we go. So this will take all the eggs out of the room. Only this one. Uh, but having a think about this, and I think what I'm going to do is... Well, I'm going to have eggs hatching in here. I'm also going to have critters dying in here, so I'm going to have eggs, meat, and eggshells. This place is going to have eggs, meat, and eggshells too. So what I was thinking of doing is taking everything that falls down in here except for the eggs. So the eggshells and the meat, dump them across in here and have this take up eggshells and meat. Just dump all the eggshells and meat in there and have that rooted down to the base. Well, we'll see how it works. Now, how are we looking on petroleum? Yeah, we're getting there. But once that's full, we'll uh, stop the petroleum. I've got to keep an eye on that one, though. If that goes too far, I might start flooding places. Right, let's do a quick cleanup. Okay. Yeah, we still need that critter sensor, actually. Hmm. Uh, what are you set to? No conveyor receptacle? Wait. Oh. <laughs> Damn it. Again. Okay, they can't reach the... Uh... Actually, I got a better idea. Let's go in from the top. Yeah, this is why you don't want to put gas in there. If I had gas in here right now, when I delete this tile, it will expose it to the vacuum of space. Okay, right, second shipping rail. Okay, the second shipping rail, this one is going to be the one that carts everything out of here. So let's put that a different direction. Say, let's go down. Uh, actually, we're not going to have eggs on it, so... Yeah, and then I'll run that off to the base. Uh, ooh, actually, I'll run that right down my plastic transport spine. Yeah, that should be fine. Now, oh, what was next? Okay, so that should get, allow us to build all those. Yeah, that'll allow access except to that automation sensor. Ah! Can people access that critter sensor? Construction errand? They should be. It's not actually telling me they can't. No, I'll leave that. All right, so while that is going on, we need to worry about how we're going to feed these critters. And up here, we've got the solar farm that's actually collecting all our regolith. In fact, uh, I queued up another one. There's actually a third one over here now. I haven't actually activated it. It's not hooked up to the automation grid. Um, but everything's powered and ready to go. Also, we're going to need to put in a whole bunch of stuff to harvest this. Like, a lot. So, let's start with some niobium first. Uh, some niobium shipping rails. They need to be about there. Yeah, there. Okay, so that one can access... Yeah. This here can access all the way up to here and down to here. Basically, it can take off any of the re any of the regolith that accumulates up top, as well as the stuff all along the bottom. Eh, it's just about the best place I could find to put it. Uh, same for this one. 
And there we go. And we're using nothing but niobium for these. Thermium, of course, if you have, if you just want to use the thermium method, that's also perfectly acceptable. Oh, I hate this. Once you scroll too much with the building, sometimes it just stops uh, being visible. Eh, you can figure it out. Uh, put you there. Okay. Now, we're also going to need to get in shipping loaders so that we can move all the debris out of here. Uh, for shipping, uh, where are we going? Conveyor loaders. Niobium. These ones are a little trickier. You want to place them really high up. The reason being, they'll interfere with the scanners if they're too close, so they need to be along the top level here. Well, that was built into the design. So we'll just stick them, say, right here. Yeah, that should be fine. And they're also made out of niobium. And there, there. Yeah, let's just keep everything nice and neat. Same everywhere. Dope. Uh, sure, that should let us to harvest them. However, these things generate heat when they're active, as in when they're when they're actually picking stuff up. It's not the actual material they're picking up that heats them up. They actually generate their own heat when they're working. Now, these uh, conveyor loaders generate their own heat as well, but not only do they generate their own heat, anything that's in them can actually transfer heat to them. But not if they don't have an atmosphere or a transfer medium. So... If they're in a vacuum and you put regolith in them, they won't actually transfer heat as far as I can tell. So you need to have them either in a liquid or a gas to actually have them transfer heat with the material that's in them. Now these things can actually survive enormous temperatures now, 575 degrees. So the plan is here, I'm going to dump in a little bit, a little bit of gas. A little bit of gas in here. Basically I'm going to get carbon dioxide, waste carbon dioxide I'm not using. So I'm going to dump in a metered amount, probably very small, about say, ooh, for every, a tile wide chunk, I'll probably use 100 grams of carbon dioxide per second. Now, we'll go in and build that as well, but first I want to hook up power. At least two of these first two starter ones. Uh, where are we going? Power. And we are swimming in enormous amounts of gold, so let's just use that. Um, where are we going to put you? You know what? We'll go in this way. And uh, one across there. Actually, that's a straight to run. Yeah. One, two, oh yeah, so actually, these use 120 watts a piece, so that's 240, so I can do, wait, like 240, one, two, three, four, so four, eight. I can do eight sections. So it's one, two sections, three sections, four sections, oh, five sections, six sections, seven, and then eight. Yeah. I probably should line them up one tile just a little bit more to the right, and then this would be a straighter run. Okay, I'll just fast forward this a bit until they're finished most of this construction. Okay, we've got it done. Well, we've got it built all the way out to here. Now all we have to do is set these to pick up what we want, which is filtration medium. Regolith, eh, we'll make you actually priority one. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. Uh, your priority one, and copy you all the way along. Boom, settings applied. I know I still have to put in shipping rails and has power looking. Okay, never mind. We'll go through a save. Yeah, as you can imagine, they're getting a little bit longer. Though once I start getting rid of all of this, um, what do you call it again, uh, regulus? Once I start disposing of that, things will get an awful lot simpler. Now, where's my power overlay? Ah. That's what's missing. I'm missing a few little power connectors here and there. Okay, one there. Oh, that's not right. Connected wire bridge might be. Yeah, there we go. Anything else missing? Yeah, one more over here. Now, so once that's done, that'll be the whole power grid done up. Now, I need shipping rails for these. Hmm. How to do this? Now, you see, do I want all the regulars to immediately be dumped in? Do I want, like, five separate rails? Do I want one rail where they all get done on it? I'm thinking I'll go with three. I think I'll go with three rails. Three rails seems like a decent number. Now, for shipping rails themselves though, yeah, so it's three sections. I do have three solar sections, so let's say we'll divide this into three sections. Four in each, and we'll have one go along here. Uh, where is it? Yeah, iron ore. Uh, one two, and one through the floor, yeah. Right, all right, so now we decide where we where each one connects up. 
So I'm thinking one from here. Yeah, we'll use you for the top. So one there, there. Yeah, we're going to burn through an awful lot of iron ore doing this. This is when you start running out of iron ore, which feels very, very strange. Uh, for these, we'll put in... Actually... Yeah, we'll have them spit-loaded. So this way... Yeah, perfect. And we'll cancel the rail behind there. Perfect. Okay, and then we'll run that back to the actual shovel farm. Then it's pretty much a case of doing the same thing. Uh, actually, you know what? It would probably be faster to build it this way. And down about here. Yeah, one there. Eh, two down, three, one more to go. Uh, I'll fast forward these bits quite a bit because it's pretty much the same thing. We're just doing a nice little organized way of getting rid of these. Okay, that's three of them. Damn, that's going to be a lot of iron ore. How much iron ore have I left? 65 tons. Okay, I just burned through an enormous amount. Uh, one there, one on the ladder, and one on the fire pole. Uh, actually, let's run these in reverse. It's usually simpler to go backwards than it is to do it in the other direction. Um, hmm. Yeah, we'll do you through the air. Damn it, I don't think I have any way of accessing that area. I don't want to run it through the visco gel. Actually, I don't think it matters if I run it through the visco gel. I just don't want to. Um, yeah, for that reason, we'll get rid of that and we'll put it in a ladder segment. Uh, yeah, that should work. Okay, time for some extremely long uh, shipping rail runs. Nobody saw that. Okay. Now I'm kind of curious. I'm down to 37 tons of iron ore. I kind of want to rewind to the start of the video and just see how much iron ore I burned on all of that. Yeah, these are expensive. Uh, I probably should have made the vole farm a bit closer, actually. If I put the vole farm right about here, it would have cut down an awful lot on travel time. Hmm. Okay, you live and you learn. I was actually trying to build it closer to the transport grid, but my transport grid can go anywhere. Okay, yeah. If you're doing this yourself, my advice would be maybe make it really close to this area. Um, I mean, I could have put it right here and it would have really shortened the amount of rails I need and cut down an awful lot on the amount of iron ore I just burned. Also, the uh, FPS drain from running these rails that long. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. If you're doing it, put them up there. Now, this is definitely going to be a skip forward bit because there's an awful lot of building that needs to go on here uh, but first off we'll just uh, cover those in so we can finish the room and as well as that uh, I want to set the sensor I'm just gonna set this to 64 if there is 64 critters in there what's it saying right now yeah so this is what extracts the eggs once there's 64 critters slash eggs in here this will turn on and start extracting the eggs those eggs will get dumped in here this means we keep a nice big high population but simultaneously, we don't need to actually run any incubators. Well, that's the theory. I have not actually tested this. So we'll find out as we go. But in theory, I should end up with 40 or 50 or so shovels. And they'll stay in there, keep dropping eggs, and those eggs will get dumped in there. Those eggs will... Hmm, actually, those eggs will then hatch. Those eggs will then evolve in here. And once they're finished evolving, the meat and the eggshells will be dumped across. And I'll probably drop, drop them off in here somewhere. In range of this uh, auto sweeper, that auto sweeper will dump all the eggshells and meat in here. And any eggshells and meat that end up in here will also get dumped in there. And we'll have that shipped down to our cooking area. And the eggshells will have shipped off to, well, our lime area. Though I'm not actually sure we need any more lime. We've got plenty of steel floating around with 106 tons. Yeah, but uh, I'll just skip forward a bit and we'll come back when all the shipping rails are complete. And we've got our first uh, regolith automation in place, and it's actually flowing down on our uh, shipping rails, and it's about to dump in here into the feed area. Now, this is actually great that they introduced these conveyor chutes, because uh, before what used to happen, you used to have to dump them into feeders, you know, uh, critter feeders. But you can feed voles off the ground. It was just the easiest way was to dump it into the conveyor receptacles, and then the conveyor receptacles you could auto-load into the feeders. But then the feeders would get regolith vomited up in them, 
the feeders would stop working every so often, it was really frustrating. So now I'm thinking we can just dump all the regolith on the ground. So I might want to spread these out a bit. Um, hmm. Yeah, I might want to spread, put one there and there. I might want to, yeah, actually, you know what? I am going to change this right now. That would be a smarter idea before this starts getting out of hand. I don't want it all in one tile because they have a tendency to just vomit stuff up the moment they're, um, the moment they feed. So we'll do one there and one there. We'll deconstruct these. Yeah, what I'm worried will happen is they'll feed on this and then immediately vomit regulus on top of it and none of the others will be able to feed and it will cause interruptions to their feed animations. This should, well, it won't be great, but worst case scenario, I can start spreading them out or even dumping them in the ladders, though I really don't want to stick them in the ladders. It means they'd be vomiting up in the ladders a lot as well. Mining drill will help out, but we'll see what happens. This is, uh, like I said, a newish design. Anyway, I'm just going to skip forward till all the rest of the shipping rails are done. Actually... Oh, you know what? We'll start sticking some voles in there and getting some grooming going on. So, who wants to be our voles? Uh, who wants to get groomed? Age one, vole pup. You know what? We will wrangle you immediately. Uh, anyone else in there? Age two. Yeah, we'll wrangle you as well. Uh, what about you? Age ten. You're a perfect candidate. Uh, you, 21, 22. Yeah, 21. Yeah, fine. Perfect. 21, 22. We'll take you as well. And actually, let's make it 51. No, yeah, I want someone. Yeah, 34. Anything else there? Nope, don't want a 95. And give me one more. All right. So all I do is a wrangle of those, and maybe I should do something about that critter drop off. You know what? Yeah, that's a good idea. Let's untick that critter drop off. Now we can start getting those voles and dumping them in here. Yeah, that's already set up, and that's the priority eight. Now, the rest of them I'm just going to leave in there. They're basically a backup supply for if anything goes wrong or I ever have any horrible catastrophes. Shouldn't be an issue, but I don't want to start with too big of a number. I want the population to increase slowly and sort of sustainably so they die off. As they're being replaced, they die off. If you just spam a whole bunch of them really quickly, you'll end up growing too fast. Uh, but that's, uh, I'll just cut forward until the rest of the rails are done, and uh, we should be good to go at that point. Okay, and this is sometimes what happens. Uh... This one got wrangled, but then as it was being transported, the, the dupe that was carrying it got called away to go do something, anything, God knows what. But whatever got called away to do made it drop the the um, vole. So now that vole is loose. Uh, so yes, high priority wrangle on that. Now these things can barrel through tiles, but the only things they can't barrel through are refined metals. So gold, iron, steel, niobium, termium, but also diamond. They can't barrel through diamond either. Um, also, they don't like liquids, so they have a tendency not to burrow through. Uh, if you, say, put them on one layer of tiles here and then surround them with one layer of water underneath it, they're, they're basically trapped. They won't burrow through tiles into water. Now, um, or liquids of any sort, basically. So, yeah, I'm going to have to actually get this critter wrangled, all the rest of them as well. But, yeah, we'll manage. We've already got a couple over here, and they're busy munching away on that regolith. How are we looking? How's your calories? Actually, you haven't been groomed yet. Now, one last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go down to the oil biome. Oh, yeah, sorry about that jump there. But I'm going to go down to the oil biome and I'm going to start decommissioning some of these. The uh, the critter ranch is down here. We'll actually start with the bottom one. We'll uh, deconstruct you. Actually, we'll take out two at a time. You know what? Yeah, let's just go whole hog. We don't need these... Uh, we're, well, it's not so much that we don't need the stickers anymore. It's just it's easier to work with only one set. I could use these to keep disposing of carbon dioxide, but I've already arranged for the excess carbon dioxide to be sent into space. Uh, if you'll remember back a long time ago, we have this overflow system so that even if this does fill up with carbon dioxide, the rest gets dumped into space and we don't care. So we can demolish this all with impunity and not worry about the system backing up somewhere else. Now, as you can see here, this is now a very, 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 very busy system. Actually, how are we looking over here? We complete all the way to the end. Uh, yes, we are. Okay, once it's cleaned up everything in the area, I'm going to actually sweep up all the steel and iron. I might even put in more of these uh, conveyor loaders. Oh, yeah, forgot about that. Uh, temperature. Uh, you'll notice the temperature in these things is rising, and it's going to continue to rise. Uh, where were you? Auto sweeper. 99 degrees already. 100 degrees. Okay, so I need to arrange for cooling. Cooling's actually not that bad. We're just going to grab some gas. Um, where were we? Oh, down here. This is the overflow gas from the carbon dioxide down in the oil biome. 
And because we're decommissioning some of those Slickster ranches, we're going to have even more carbon dioxide coming up. So all we're going to do is put on a few overflows here. Uh, actually, we're going to draw it out. Uh, we're going to want a priority flow, and we're going to dump it all into one pipe. So one there, one there, and you're going to have to go there. So like that. Uh, gas bridge, gas pipe. All right. Uh, gas pipe again. Oh yeah, so I'm going to merge all of these into one flow. Uh, for that, we're just going to have one gas bridge. I basically just want one full gas pipe full of carbon dioxide that I can use for cooling down the area. Uh, you into there. Okay, we're going to run this over to our regular harvesting facilities and start dumping off gas. I forgot I had that hydrogen there. Uh, you know what? That can go there. Regular gas pipe will make you out of mafic because I'm addicted to mafic in the space biome. One second. Just had a thought. I need to put in a buffer tank for this just in case there's ever an interruption in the flow. Uh, put yeah, one buffer tank here should be fine. So, give me a gas reservoir. Okay. Yeah, that should be plenty. Now, I need to divide this up into multiple sections so I can actually split out gas. Um, actually, let's just show you how that's going to look. Um, we got a nice flat area here. Yeah, we'll do it here, sure. Um, hmm. Here, uh, give me a gas bridge. Now we're going to want three flows because we have three separate areas you want to fill. And we're going to meter off just a small amount of gas to each one. It's also going to require some backing plates. Like I said, there is an awful, awful lot of effort that goes into getting shovel, shovel farming automated. And if you get your dupes to run around and pick everything up, oh, it's just so time consuming. Uh, for this, I'm going to use steel, namely because I have got just such an abundance of it right now. Uh, say one there, one there, and one... Oh, that's gas shutoffs. That's not what I wanted. I'm going to cancel you. I actually just want gas... What do you call them? Gas valves. Make those out of steel. Perfect. Now, we're going to want one for here. Uh, yeah, we're in three of them, so... Actually, we'll just wait until all the building catches up, and then I'll get back to you right then. Okay, we've got our uh, gas pipe set up right there. They've completed most of it. I think they're missing the... Oh, no, they've got the gas tank up and running. We should be actually... Yep, CO2 is coming through. Perfect. Okay, so now what we want to do is actually change the pressure on these gas valves. I'm going to set all of these to 100 grams. Now, the reason we're doing this is we just want to meter out a small amount of gas. We don't want to dump a whole lot of gas in here. I did that originally. I dumped in a lot of gas, but there's actually quite a few negatives to dumping in large quantities of gas into this area. Namely, it's because carbon dioxide will actually... Carbon dioxide in, in an area will actually decrease the amount of light that passes through. It's a light blocker, so it will actually decrease the effectiveness of our solar panels, and also it will decrease the effectiveness of our scanners. In fact, pretty much every gas, I believe, interferes with scanners. Not every gas interferes with light. Uh, by that I mean oxygen and hydrogen, they don't actually interfere with light. Light passes through them without any loss of lux. Uh, where is it? So here's the lux at the moment. It's about 1600. It, it, it's passing straight through everything here because there's nothing here that interferes with light. Carbon dioxide, however, will. But it's a waste gas, and if we use small amounts of it, it'll only have some minor negative consequences. Usually livable with. Now, what I want to do here is spread it out, so we're spreading out a little bit of the gas around the area. Uh, we're not actually using the gas for cooling. The gas will actually interact with the regolith. And because of that, it'll basically keep the temperature in here around 300, 400 degrees, which is perfectly fine for niobium. Now, uh, one, two, three, four, that's one section. It gets a gas vent. One, two, three, four, that's another section that also gets a gas vent. And I'm going to actually split this up, so say... 100 grams will go there every two seconds, and 100 grams will go there every two seconds. So that means both of those sections will get 50 grams apiece per second. Then all we do is repeat the process with the next section. So one, two, three, and what was it I was going to do? Ah, 
Let me count this back up again before I lose my... Uh, so after the second one. And then one, two, three, four. Mm. You know what? I'll do it from here. Much easier to see from this distance. So one, two. And one, two. Yeah, one, two. And one, two. Is that too far? I think I've gone too far. Have I gone too far? You know what? It'll do. And then all I do is the exact same thing. Yeah. Okay, so it'll meter at 50 grams of gas per second to both of those areas. And final one. Actually, you know what? I could do this much neater if I just did it this way. Okay, but I hear some people screaming at the, the screen. Okay, maybe talking politely in their own heads. Uh, that gas will immediately go into the vacuum of space and won't actually interact with anything. And you're right. That's not all we have to do. Uh, we actually have to give a backing plate so that this stuff can't immediately escape. So that means, yes, we will literally have to install backing plates all the way around here. All the way. Uh, I mean, yeah. Okay, so I am just going to skip forward while I queue all of this insanity up. Uh, as well as that, I'm going to need to change out those, well, I don't have to change out those miners, but those miners have their own cooling solution, and that's going to, well, also provide cooling to the ca carbon dioxide. But why bother? I simply swap out the miners for niobium miners, and if I do that, then all of my cooling needs will be met by the waste gas I'm actually just throwing away into space anyway. So, yeah, I've got plenty of ni niobium to do that, niobium to do that. So I'm just going to cut this out here, and I'll cut back in when uh, I've got this all queued up. And there, we have an enormous amount of building queued up. <laughs> like I said, shovels, they're an awful lot of effort, but they really are worth it in the end. Well, when I say worth it, you really do need to dispose of all that regat that's going to accumulate, and this was the only way I could figure out how to do it that didn't involve enormous amounts of duplicate labour. If you've got to get your duplicates to pick up this uh, regolith every time there's a shower, it's just so much effort. Your duplicates will be spending most of their time doing that, and you won't have time for them to do anything else. Like, how are they supposed to catch a suntan or, you know, do all the other stuff that dupes do? So this basically allows you to take the waste CO2 that you're producing and turn it into something useful. It also allows you to produce an enormous amount of meat. And it's actually very power cheap. Well, okay, you are going to have those loaders running quite a bit, so it's not that power cheap, but you don't actually have to run incubators down here. We're just going to be grooming these critters, they'll drop eggs, and then those eggs should hatch in here. Uh, how are we looking over on this side? Wildness, 27%. Okay, half a cycle, that one will be actually tamed. How are we doing on the others? Yeah, about the same. They're all almost all ready to be tamed up and start reproducing rapidly. And did I lose any more? Uh, yep. When you're transferring critters around the place, you really have to account for the fact that occasionally a dupe is going to drop them. That was the fault with my last design on this. Uh, I used to wrangle the critters into the kill room, or evolution room, sorry, evolution room. Still working on that. Um, so that was actually led to the the sho shovels occasionally getting out, and then a, a loose shovel can vomit up gunk somewhere that causes something to clog up, which is usually bad. Now, the last thing I want to do is actually get this set up. Was that made of niobium? Niobium? No, it was not. Cancel you. Uh, this is where we're going to load up, um, oh no, that's conveyor receptacle, conveyor loader, that's what we want. You are going to actually pick up stuff and drop it off in here. Now, what was it I was going to get you to drop off? Uh, radius on that is there. You can reach it, actually, I might just drop it here, and this conveyor, uh, this auto sweeper can dump it into that conveyor loader. Yeah, that's pretty close. Uh, we'll say, grab this, more iron. Oop, nope. Yeah, we're going to conveyor bridge, hop over that rail, and conveyor chute. Then all we do is we have this pick up meat and eggshells, dump them in here, and then all the meat and eggshells will get thrown into this conveyor loader. I haven't run the cable for this yet. Nope, there's a bunch of regolith they vomited up, and there's another chunk. But this one here is going to be for... No, not consumable ores. Food, food, food. Where are we? Meat. Uh, you're going to pick up meat, and you're also going to pick up eggshells. Okay. Meat and eggshells all get dumped in there. I'll still have to run a conveyor rail down to my kitchens for that, but in the time being... Wow, that's a lot of regular time. How much are we looking at? 
13 tons. Yeah, what do you got? Yep, oh, you're being devoured as soon as you drop down. Actually, a lot of that's been devoured. All right, I'll just cut forward until the rest of this is done so we can have a, a general overview of how this system works. We'll still have to... Well, it'll be a while before all of these start breeding and dropping eggs and we can really get the system in full swing. But this should give you a general idea as to how it works. And why is that last rail not transporting anything? Okay, there's an exit on it. Oh, yes. That was the one thing I forgot to hook up. I forgot to hook up this last section. Uh, where is it? You see, I haven't hooked, a, hooked it into the automation grid to open and close its doors. So, let's grab some automation wire. Gold will be fine. There we go. Now, uh, one last thing. Uh, suggestion in the comments that I actually run all these wires into one NOT gate. I don't really want to do that. Uh, hmm. What I am going to do is do it this way. It's shorter, it doesn't mean I have to go up there, and that just basically links them all onto one wire. I could have used just one NOT gate and then hooked, hooked uh, two NOT gates, or one NOT gate on each of them, and then hooked them all into one line, just to shorten the distance. But now this section should become active, and we can actually start using this solar down here as well. What should help supplement our power needs, though, how are our batteries looking? Even while the doors were closed, our batteries still never actually dipped down to danger levels. Danger levels are about 65%, so about... 13 kilowatts. Once it hits 13 kilowatts about there, that's when my actual um, petroleum generators kick in. So I'm still pretty close on the power requirements, but once this is all finished, we should be good to go. Right, I'll just skip forward until this enormous amount of backing construction is done and we can have an overview of the system. Okay, this actual auto sweeper overheated. Um, I hadn't got the gas up and running in time, but now that the gas is actually pumping out here, you'll notice that temperature on it is plummeting. It's actually going down quite nicely. Now, this is not just because uh, of the gas. It's also because there's uh, little drops of petroleum here on these tiles. It's helping to cool down the area as well. It's not chilly by any means, but it's definitely keeping the whole place chill. Now, what I'm going to try later is actually removing those blobs of petroleum and seeing if this will still remain thermally stable using just the carbon dioxide and the regolith for heat dispersal, or heat removal. But for the time being, we'll just cut out again while these duplicates continue on with their very, very very long task of actually completing all this construction work I've assigned them. Now, there are other ways you can do to cool things around here instead of just putting in uh, backing plates. What you could do is, you can, these auto sweepers here, just imagine I instead placed... Uh, oh, I deleted one of those, did I? Yeah, I did one that was overheating because it was taking too long to get uh, replacements in there. It's here. What you could do instead is actually, say, put the auto sweeper right about here. Yeah, if you place it here, it will still be able to gain access to this section up here. So it will be able to sweep this whole area, but at the same time, it's low enough that when the regolith falls and it's two tiles high, it will entomb this auto sweeper. Well, at least until the drill kicks in. And that entombment will help it transfer heat to the regolith and it will help cool it down. So that's another option. You could also do the same by putting the conveyor loaders down here so that they'll also get a, get a entombed it. But that will, if you put the conveyor loader down here, it will interfere with the scanner. That's why I don't do that. Um, there's probably a way to do it uh, that isn't this well that doesn't require as much effort as I'm having to put in here. But I couldn't think of one that didn't require you know putting tiles over these or finding some other way of cooling them. So this is just the method I use. If you've got a better method, please send it on to me. Emails in the about section of the channel. Just uh, send on a, a, a saved file to me, and I'll have a look through it. I'd, the more you know, the better. Um, oh, and another thing I want to point out is. Let's look at the scanners. This one should be perfect. Yeah, scan quality 100%. So the scan quality on this scanner is absolutely perfect, as it should be, even though there's uh, conveyor loaders up here. If those conveyor loaders were just one tile closer, they'd interfere with this and decrease the scan quality. But you notice the scan network quality is fluctuating. So let's go over to, say, this one. Scan quality, zero. How is it, how is it that bad? It can't be that bad. Okay, that's a problem. I may have to decrease the amount of scan quality, 70%. This is fluctuating quite a bit as well. This one should also be fluctuating quite a bit. It shouldn't actually be zero. Hmm. How are you looking? Zero percent as well? Hmm. Yeah, I'll do some more troubleshooting on this, but uh, this one seems to be more realistic. What's happening is the carbon dioxide gas is actually interfering with the scan quality. I may actually have to decrease the amount of gas going in here. You can see the carbon dioxide escaping into space and escaping down here. I may be actually accumulating too much gas in here. 
So I may want to strip out a few of these uh, backing plates to let some of the more of the gas escape or decrease the amount of gas coming in from the gas valves. That's why I have these gas valves here to control the flow. You put in too much gas, you cut off your scanners. You put in too little gas, things start to overheat. So what I'm going to do is actually play around with this, figure out what's the right amount of gas, and to not interfere with the scanners, not decrease my light levels too much so that it's interfering with my solar. Um, actually, and the light's gone, so I can't show you how it interferes with the solar. Okay, I'll, I'll skip forward. They'll complete more of this construction, and we can uh, do a little bit more troubleshooting. Okay, as you can see here, this can quality is fluctuating wildly over here. We're going down as low as 33%, sometimes 73%. This is one of the reasons I don't hook up timers to these. You can hook all of these up, get say 200 seconds of advanced warning, and then you can set a timer so that the doors close say 45 seconds before the meteors hit. But considering I was going to be throwing all this gas in here and messing up the quality, I decided, you know what, I'll just leave them as they are. So long as they close in time, I don't really care. And this uh, CO2 interference, well, fine, it's annoying, but at the same time, I'm automating the removal of all this regolith. Yes, yes, please. That regolith, I just, I couldn't find any other way to deal with it efficiently. Now the dupes are almost finished up here. Once they are, we'll double check all of this and make sure the gas feeds and all that. Actually, look here, you can see the packets passing through. Wait, that's way too much carbon dioxide. Why is there a thousand grams? 100 grams, 100 grams, 100 grams. You know what? Let's set those to uh, priority nine. I think someone has not updated their priorities. That would explain why we're getting so much gas in some areas. Yeah, you can see here, there's only small amounts of gas being metered in. What's this looking like? Yeah, they're about 200 degrees. They're perfect. So we'll just limit everything to 100 grams, and that should be fine. Now, get rid of that. Yeah, those things really need to be... I wish those things were actually instant or player-controlled. Now, with that, let's jump back to... Where's it here? Yes. All right, so... Yeah, oh, looks like that can take overheat damage. Let's uh, deconstruct you. Don't need you anymore. These ones don't take overheat damage. And all the critters are nicely groomed. Yeah. Now, what's the critter sensor reading? Okay, it tells me absolutely nothing, but this tells me there's seven critters. All right. Everything is set up here. The only thing we're missing is I need to tell this what to pick up. Same thing as, well, this one. Meat and eggshells. What's it? Yeah, meat. And where's the other one? Organic, which is eggshells. Yeah, so we'll just copy those settings and put them over there. Oh, power. My bad. And done. All right, so that should take care of those. I'm just going to have to skip forward some more. I mean, this is basically going to be a case of this population is going to have to grow. I'm going to have to keep dumping in regolith enormous amounts. Uh, oh, actually, I'm also going to have to put oxygen in here. Let's finish that off while we're here. Uh, this oxygen feed feeds that. What does this feed? Oh, I think that feeds the telescope. Yeah, this is feeding the telescope over here. Piece of advice, disable the telescope when you're finished with it. Um, if you deconstruct the telescope, you lose access to the star map, so you need a telescope somewhere. Doesn't matter if it's down in your base, trapped under, doesn't matter how many tiles of rock, but you do need a telescope somewhere. And currently it's still buggy. Um, what can happen is even though you've scanned all the planets and there's nothing left to do, your dupes will sometimes get into it and start looking at the sky or rocks or whatever's above them. I don't know why. So just disable the building and I've never had my dupes get back into it. Now, uh, but yes, that's the oxygen we're going to get and we're going to use some of that oxygen to fill in here and actually give pressure to this area. I think we're actually good to do that right now. Uh, and when we get a high pressure gas vent, let's make it very heavily pressurized in here. Uh, so we'll dump in a bunch of oxygen. That there will help pressurize this whole area. Uh, it just means that all of these things won't overheat. For example, how's the miner looking at the moment? Yeah, it's gone up a few degrees. We need to take care of that before it becomes a problem. Oh, what are you? Copper ore. You can be swept. All right, so I'll just skip forward a fair bit until most of this is all completed and we've actually got a stable system and we can see it running at full swing. So I uh, tried to make a few modifications there and... Well, yeah, I may have cracked open the room and accidentally let a bunch of the critters out. <laughs> Oops. Um, we'll, we'll wrangle them all back in. It will be fine. Oh, wait. Missed one. You. Uh, yeah, we'll make you a level 8 as well. Oops. Well, we kept one for now. We'll catch the rest of them, probably. Hopefully, at some point. 
anyway, um, yeah, the problem I was having was this year, even though I'd switched it off with automation, was still actually storing eggs. I couldn't stop it from doing that. So what I've decided to do instead, um, going to be a bit odd, I'm going to, hmm, I am going to disable the auto sweepers. So I'm going to disable the auto sweepers until the population in here gets high enough. When it gets high enough, the auto sweepers will turn on. And the first thing they'll do is they'll stock this up with meat and uh, eggs. And then they'll throw in the critter eggs. Well, theoretically, how's their automation looking? Okay. Then you should be disabled. Excellent, you are. In that case, we can turn this one back on to actually store eggs. Where is it? Roll eggs. Rolls. Yeah, boom. Uh, so roll eggs will go in there, but only when the when it gets too high. But that first, they'll move all the meat and eggshells into this. So meat and eggshells will be prioritized. It does mean I'll get sporadic bursts of meat, but who cares? Oh. Yeah, that was something I forgot. Critter drop off. Yeah, there's nowhere to actually put those shovels now that they've actually spawned. We will make you a priority eight, because we need you done in a hurry. Uh, we want all those voles back in there so we can start uh, getting more meat and get them all processed. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the regolith is just pouring in constantly. I'm going to need an awful lot of voles to take care of this all. That's why I've got this critter sensor in here. I can adjust the amount of voles I need. I might go up higher than I need to start and then cut back depending on how much regolith I'm actually farming. Yeah, we'll find out how that works out. Yeah, but first, I got to get this up and running so I can get all the voles in before they all break free of the, uh, the wrangling that, that gets done to them. When you wrangle a critter, it's only actually for a brief period of time they will actually recover from it. We're gonna make that really high as well. Stupidly high, get everyone back in there. So if you leave them there long enough, they'll actually break free of the wrangling and go about their, their duties as normal. Bit of an odd thing, but uh, just not something you normally expect. And this up here, all done. We've got it all completed and we're metering out the gas just right. Uh, the problem was, even though I'd actually set the gas filters to 100, it turns out you actually have to select the gas number manually and hit enter. Copy pasting the settings didn't seem to do anything. It said it was doing 100, but really no, it was letting all the carbon dioxide through full tilt. Okay, right, now, to compensate for the fact that I'm now going to be putting, leaving the meat and the eggshells in here for longer because these auto sweepers won't be on constantly, I'm going to have to put in a gas to preserve them. So I'm thinking, why not just dump in something close by that I have in large quantities and don't need very much? Uh, carbon dioxide. I'm just going to dump half the carbon dioxide I'm getting in here to pressurize this room. And I've removed that tile there to actually let out all the oxygen. Is there any oxygen in here? Yeah, there's still pieces of oxygen, but the carbon dioxide will sit at the bottom, force all the oxygen at the top, and eventually I'll just seal that up once we've got nothing but carbon dioxide left in there. As you can see, yeah, there's still oxygen, but it'll eventually go away. Oh okay, yeah, I'm just going to cut forward a bit more now that I've managed to resolve some of those mistakes. And uh, maybe I'll have a look around and see if I've lost a vole. I, see, I should have seven. One, two, three, four... Yep, I'll count them up off screen. There's no need for you to see me running down lots of voles. Tricksy little bugger. Thought he could get away, eh? Almost did, almost did. Yeah, okay, second tricksy little bugger. It seems I'm not very good at catching voles. Uh, I think I'm going to do a big drag select. Maybe I can find some more. Okay, I have made some changes. <laughs> just uh, one or two. Minor ones just to deal with some issues that cropped up. Uh, the first was... Okay, this does look very confusing now that I think about it. Uh, the first was I had no way of really stopping these from picking up the eggs and throwing them into the conveyor loader. Uh, even if the conveyor loader was turned off by automation or if I removed power to it, they'd still dump the eggs in there straight away, even though the conveyor loader wasn't going to do anything with them. And that would mean the eggs, of course, wouldn't hatch. So what I've done here is this critter sensor is now hooked up via automation to the auto sweepers. So the auto sweepers will only turn on when there's more than 64 critters slash eggs in this room. When they do, they'll dump all the uh, meat and eggshells in here at level five. So they'll do all of this first. Then after they've done that, they'll start picking up critter eggs. And once the amount of eggs in here has decreased the population before 64, well, these auto sweepers will switch off. So once they've switched off, that'll keep the population stable. Well, that's the theory, we'll find out. Now, all of those eggs will get dumped across here and sent into the evolution chamber. Once they become old enough and hatch, they'll uh, evolve in here into meat, at which point they'll get dumped across this conveyor rail. Uh, yes, this is very confusing, but it'll go across this conveyor rail and get dumped down here. So all the eggshells and meat get dumped in here. Of course, these uh, voles don't eat meat. Uh, what did they eat? They eat regulus, dirt, iron ore, 
So I don't have to worry about them consuming any of the meat or any of the eggshells. So that'll stay there until the automation here kicks in and then it'll dump all that meat into this conveyor system. And this conveyor system will dump it all the way down and it's gonna go all the way down to the kitchens. It's already built. So that's gonna drop off all the way down to the kitchens and dump into the CO2 pit down there. So I'll get sporadic bursts of meat once the population gets too big. Well, that's what I've decided on. We'll see how this works out. Now, over here I've thrown in a couple of automatic dispensers and I've set them for regolith, level three. And it's not sweep, it's just pick it up and dump it in there. So my duplicates are going to run around the map. Actually, I'm going to have to stop them getting at this. You know what? Uh, hmm. Give me a pneumatic door. Oh, no, I can't. You can't place pneumatic doors there because there's drywall backing in the way. Um, hmm. Actually, I'll just move these down a tile so that they can't gain access to it. I'll do that off screen. But anyway, that basically means any regolith that falls around the map and ends up in places I can't get access, like over here in these rocket silos, any regolith that accumulates there, my dupes will go along, pick it up, and dump it into these uh, automatic dispensers. Now, but what's to stop them from picking up this regolith? Nothing. They'll go around and pick that up too, and hopefully clean that up and dump it into the shovel wool farm. Shovel farm. And then over here, I've actually installed pneumatic doors. And these pneumatic doors are locked so that none of the duplicates can get in here. They can get out, they just can't get in. So this means any regolith that ends up in here will be harvested by these and sent back via shipping rails. So hopefully my duplicates will not have to go in here to access anything and, you know, clean it. So the plan now is I'm just going to let this run. I'm going to go off and do some stuff. i got to cook food, shower, the usual things, and I'll let this run for a few hours and come back and see how it's all worked out. If anything breaks, I'll, uh, I'll fix it and we'll, we'll sort something out then. But yes, this is all the effort you have to go to to get, well, what I consider a very labor-free food, food source out of regolith. Well, no, this is more disposing of the regolith. I have how much regolith? 8,830 tons. I need to start consuming that and getting rid of it before it becomes more and more of an FPS hog. So we use our waste carbon dioxide to cool everything down. Seems to be working out just fine. Well, uh, I haven't ripped out the cooling loop yet. I don't want to until I've stress tested this at least a bit. Um, and that waste carbon dioxide cools down that area. And I've dumped in a bunch of carbon dioxide in here to make sure that this place doesn't overheat either. So the mining drills, the auto sweepers, all that should be grand. And that's it. I know that's an awful lot of work to get shovel voles up and running, but they are a late game food source and they're more of waste disposal than anything else. Uh, you can do this with smaller builds if you want to actually have more duplicant labor involved, but uh, that's, I really would prefer to free up my duplicates for other chores, though realistically at this point there's nothing left to do. So I think we're coming close to the end of this playthrough anyway. I've got uh, a few things I'll, I'll cover in the next video. Um, well, actually this video is not over. Hmm. Actually, yeah, I'll just uh, skip this forward in time and we'll come back after a hundred cycles or so have passed and see how this is uh, stress tested. So after taking a break for a little bit, I realized, yeah, this is a complete mess. <laughs> I had a serious case of dupe head when I was putting this together. The, the basic idea was sound, but uh, I think the problem is going to be uh, these um, conveyor loaders. The moment these auto sweepers activate, they're going to try and pick up 1,000 kilos of material to stick in there. I think they can, I think auto supers can pick up a couple hundred kilos. Well, more than there is actually eggs. So they'll actually pick up all the eggs and dump them in immediately. So I'll basically strip out the eggs the moment this activates. Got an idea for a fix. It shouldn't be too much, too big of a deal. But uh, looking at the footage, I've got well over an hour of footage already. Probably because of, well, yeah, putting all of that together. So, uh, I'll cut this out here, but and I'll put up the save, but I'll advise you this is not completed. This needs some. This needs a bit of an overhaul to get to be working correctly. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed my struggles with regolith and voles, and uh, good luck.